Today we're going to have a go at making a membranophone. This produces sound by vibrating a stretched membrane. Kazoos and drums are both examples of this. So this is our membranophone. It has a straw, part of a plastic bottle, a piece of plastic stretched over the top to make our membrane, and a paper tube that goes right from the membrane all the way down and has lots of holes punched into it so that we can change the pitch of the noise that we make. Here are all the different materials you're going to need to make your membranophone. You'll need a hole punch, some tape, a pair of scissors, a piece of card, a straw, a plastic bottle and some thin plastic like fruit wrappers or sandwich bags. Now our first job is going to be to cut our bottle in half. Now we want half with the bottle top on. I'm going to cut just past halfway on mine. There we go. Now we also need to put a hole punch in our bottle along this open edge. This is where our straw is going to go through. Now I've only got a two hole hole punch. If you've got a single one that would work best. We need it as far down as we can get it. Right, there's my little hole punch. We're going to test to make sure that our straw fits through that hole. There we go, now mine fits through nice and tightly. If your straw isn't fitting, you might have to make the hole ever so slightly bigger. And if it's too small, your straw, and there's lots of space around the outside, you might want to put some blue tack or Play-Doh around the outside to make sure that no air escapes through there. You have to do that a little bit later though. I'm going to take that out for now because we still need to put our membrane over the top. This is going to vibrate and give us the sound. So you're going to need to cut a piece of plastic that's big enough to cover your opening. So I have got some banana bag. Make sure it's big enough. And we're going to put this over the top and tape all the way around. And make sure no air can escape. So you might want someone to help you out with this part. Someone to hold it and someone to stick. Alright, so now I've got mine in place, I'm going to go around a couple more times to make sure there's no air escaping around any of those outside edges. A good way to test is to blow into your bottle opening and you'll be able to see if there's a feel with your hands and see if there's any air escaping. Oh, I've got a little bit on this side, so I'm going to put a little bit more tape on. better. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do at this stage is to put a little hole where we put our hole punch so we can get our straw back through again. See if I can find mine. Once you've got your hole you can pop your straw back in. You might want to fold your straw ever so slightly at the end and then feed it through your hole. There we go. So now we need to make the tube to go in the bottom of our bottle. I've got my card here. So I'm going to roll my card up. Now it needs to be rolled tight enough so that it will fit through the opening on our bottle. Slide it through. I'm going to push it all the way up to the top of that plastic. Make sure your straw's not in the way. There we go. Now if you let go it might unroll slightly but that's good. That means it's going to be nice and tight inside that bottle and we can put some tape all the way along that line. Now 
Now this is a good time as well to test that you're able to get a noise with your membrana phone. So we're going to blow through our straw. And hopefully we'll get a noise. Now if you're not getting a noise we need to wiggle our tube backwards and forwards ever so slightly until we start getting that noise. Let's have a go. Ooh, first time. So if I move my tube away from the plastic, I won't get that vibrating noise. You need to wiggle it forward till it's touching the plastic. Once it's in exactly the right place, you will get that noise again. Now at the minute, we can only make one sound. If we cut the tube to different lengths, we could change the pitch. But an easier way to do it is to put some little holes to cover with our fingers. And that will help us change the pitch. So I'm going to flatten my tube slightly with my fingers by pinching all the way along. And then use my hole punch again. I'm going to punch little half circles, you can see half a yellow in my little hole punch there, down my tube. So this is changing the length of the tube without cutting it all off. Some air, depending on which hole we cover with our fingers, will be able to escape at different places all the way down the tube. I'm going to have four on mine. I'm going to pop it back into a circle cylinder shape and give it a go. Put my fingers on all the holes to start off with. And there we go. Play around with different positions for your little notes. See what sounds and pictures you can come out with. How does our membrana foam work? First of all, we need to think about what sound actually is. Now sound starts with some sort of vibration. This could be anything, someone speaking, hitting a drum, or even dropping something. These vibrations are energy waves that travel through the air. When the sound waves reach our ear, they make our eardrum vibrate and pass on the waves to our inner ear. There are some words that we can use to describe sound waves. Frequency is how quickly the wave is moving. Frequency impacts pitch. A high frequency will create a higher pitch, a squeaky voice. A low frequency has a lower pitch, a very deep voice. Amplitude is how big the wave is, and this affects volume. A big wave will have a loud sound and a small wave will have a quiet sound. As you blow through your straw, you are creating pressure inside your bottle. All of that air you're blowing inside is trapped in this bottle, between the tube and the outside of the plastic bottle. That pressure forces our plastic membrane to rise up and lets the air escape down our paper tube and out of the bottom. As the air escapes, the pressure falls and the membrane returns back to its initial position. As we keep blowing air into our instrument, the membrane rises and falls and rises and falls rapidly as the pressure changes. If you put your finger over the membrane whilst blowing in it, you'll be able to feel that vibration. And it's that vibration that produces the sound. We can change the pitch of our sound by opening and closing the holes on our tube. This changes the volume of air trapped inside our tube. If there is a small volume of air, the air vibrates quicker, it has a higher frequency, and we get a higher pitch. But if we close the holes, we get a larger volume of air, and the air vibrates slower, at a lower frequency, meaning we get a lower pitch. <laughs> 